in this video, we go over the theory method in resource allocation problem in construction planning and control. We start with the project network and with a series activity, each activity gives duration and the resources needed. In this case, we have two CAP resources, Masons and uh, Helper. Example, activity A, it requires uh, two mansions and one helper. Activity D, another example, requires only one mansion and no helper. So with that, we can go ahead to calculate the critical path method using the PDM method uh, to find out the early start, early finish, late start, and late finish for that uh, for each of the activity and like forward pass and backward pass as we did uh, before so I don't need to go into details uh, how to calculate the critical path method just quickly view we start with zero at the duration activity a1 you can get one for the early finish do with the similar go forward maximum go backward minimum we find out that this process requires 16 days and we can go ahead to continue to find out the late start and uh, total float and free float and now with that information we move to problem one which is uh, we want to uh, use this method to allocate resources for that project with the constraint is we only have five mansions five mansions and uh, two helpers maximum that we can allocate for this project so what is the theory method let's go to review the theory method uh, in this case here so the theory method is schedule activity to start as soon as their predecessor have been completed so that is the first rule second rule if an activity has started is it not interrupted if more than one activity using a specific limited resources just add mansions or helpers that can be scheduled those activity then priority given to the earliest late start so whoever have the lowest late start will has higher priority if both activity are ready to schedule and both for example have the same late start then we go to the rule number four if activity tie with the early late start date then give priority to the activity with the least total flow and then if they also tie with total flow give priority to activity with the largest number of resources used example it all the first four rules the same type for two activity and if activity a require uh, three helpers activity b require five helpers then give priority to activity b because they use more resources and if no activity has been selected based on those first five rules then you just simply go to the input order in this case if a b c if a and b have the same for all of the first uh, rules then you just go with a so with that review let's go to uh, problem one so with that method here you can see uh, with just the first five columns resource duration total float and lay start we just copy that from uh, the problem here a resources 2m 1h duration 1 total float 0 lay start 0 b 2m 1h duration 4 total float 0 and lay start 1 so do the same and copy all of that information in that uh, the first five columns after activity column here and then you now go ahead to uh, allocate resources 
let's start with the first date day number one and in day number one you can see only activity a can be ready to start then you make a check mark green check mark on activity a on day one so that you can schedule that and that schedule a require two m and one helper so you have two one and that the day one is only one activity. Activity A can be started and allocate resources. Now, day number two, activity A already completed based on your schedule. Based on your schedule, you have activity B and activity C E ready to start. So when with that the case, we can check mark when activity two, uh, day two, we check my activity B and C because it's ready when activity H, uh, when activity A is completed. Now the next is priority. Which one I should start first, C or B, or can I start both? We go to review the uh, uh, the rules. So they are ready to start. Rule number three, as you can see, more than one activity using specific limited resources. In this case, uh, A, sorry, in this case, B and C are ready to schedule, given priority to the activity with the earliest late start. So with that one, go back to here, the late start for activity B is one, late start for activity C is seven. So you give priority to activity B because B had latest one, lowest. So you schedule two mention and one helper. So two one two one two one two one because when it be started, it now interrupt uh, cannot be interrupted based on the rule number two. So that you can schedule B and now check if we can be able to schedule acti uh, activity C as well. It turned out to be yes. So you can put two one because that require and it only two days. So the next day that you will uh, focus on is activity four, uh, day number four, day number four. And when day number four, we have activity C completed. Again, activity B is still in progress. So C completed, then you check what are the other activity is ready to schedule. So when C completed, I have F, I have G, I have H ready then on the day four you can check okay F G H ready F G H ready check mark F G H and then compare the late start of activity still uh, in line waiting for schedule so F G H you have F late start 10 G 9 H 11 so on day four, G have the first priority based on the late start, the lowest late start rule. However, it have uh, need two helper, and two helper. If I put in day number four for G, the helper required on that day four is three, because one is for activity B, as you see there, and then. Activity G another two helpers. Why we only have two helpers? For that reason, we cannot schedule activity G. We move to the next activity, which is activity F. Let's start at 10. And it turned out it good. We got 3M and 0 helper. So we can now we can schedule activity F on day 4. And when we already start to schedule based on the theory method, we have to uh, continue schedule resources, allocate resources for that activity because we cannot interrupt. So that three zero and for three days, three zero, three zero, and three zero. Now we can add them together with the schedule here. So you have activity A, uh, two one, active day number two, two one, two one. So that way for two. Uh, number three, the same, four, two. Number four, 
213051 and similarly uh, day number 5 51 and now go to day number 6 activity B is e completed activity B completed when B completed we have another check mark or two B completed we can have D is ready to schedule E is ready to schedule so with that we can do a check mark for D and E D and E so from this we have D ready E go back here again E is ready and then we already schedule activity uh, we already schedule activity F so we also have GH on day number six and now compare the late start for all of your activity these have late start six E have late start five G nine and H eleven so from where we seem to choose uh, E first on day six so if I choose D, so 3M and 0H put here on day 6, then I can add 30 on day F that already scheduled in before. So it will be uh, needing 6 mention, which is not enough mention to allocate for both E and F. Then we need to move on to the next priority activity which is activity D because the late start is 6 compared to uh, G and H 9, 11 and then luckily with that one mention 0 helper one day so that's why we put um, D is 1, 0 here and then uh, with that we have D and F we have 3, 0 for F 1, 0 for D so it total is four mentions and zero helpers. It means that we still have one mention available and two helpers available for day uh, starting day number six. So with that we can check if other activity can be away can be working on that EG is still able to schedule. And then of course with the low the earliest place that will be the higher priority between G and S, we have to look at G first, nine, let's start, and you have one mention and two helpers, which is enough for the day number six. That's why we allocate uh, resources to activity G. So that, and when it started on day six, we have to continue uninterrupted so that we have uh, uh, one zero. 3, 0, 1, 2, and that will be 5, 2. It perfectly meet the schedule. And when activity uh, day number 7, we have activity D uh, done, activity F uh, done, so it means let's check after day number 6, when D is done, F is done, which one is available? F done? L is not available yet, because G and H have to be completed. Eden, J available. So from that one, uh, J in my list. So I make a check mark on J. So, so far, as you see the uh, from this schedule, at by day seven, we have activity E available to work on, activity H, activity J. J. Then we continue to compare. E, 5, H, 11, J, 7. So we will go priority for E. Uh, lower, lowest uh, late start. So we can have that 3, 0. 3, 0, 3, 0 for 4 days. And then compare between... Uh, and then add them with the G already scheduled from day 6. We have 3, 0, 1, 2. So it means 3... For, for two and then we can check between H and J so it will be J of high, higher priority two mention two helpers it's not enough if I go then I move to H one mention 
two helpers is not enough because we already use max out two helpers. That's why we cannot allocate, we cannot schedule any other activity between day seven, eight, and nine. So that we can add this activity uh, with resources. So we have four, two, four, two, four, two. And then uh, when it day 10, activity G is completed. G completed. And let's see here. By now we have F, G completed, but H is not started, so L cannot be completed. So it's still in the schedule on day, uh, day 10 that uh, we on, also have a check mark for activity E, which is still under schedule. Activity uh, H and activity J. And of course, we go the priority for activity J is 7 compared to 11. They start in 8. That's why we put uh, activity J. And luckily, uh, with 3 0 here, it uh, perfectly meet the requirement for the resources for activity J. And then, can we do the activity DH as well? It's not. Even day 10 and then day 11 because we add if I put the activity H one mention what helper we have more than helper record I mean needed if we are work on uh, H and J concurrently that's why we cannot allocate H on day 10 or 11 even they ready to schedule and then when activity J done we uh, see uh, what activity is available, J done, then you will see uh, E also done, so K is available. So E done, J done, K available, we can make a check mark here. And uh, those activity, we can see H and K, uh, 9 and 11, so we can go with K first, with the lower. So you have two one two one two one and it's six days so you could put there then however H still can be a, a schedule on day 12 because the resource still available so one 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 so you add them and then uh, after H is completed after H is completed we uh, see if it available for so F G H so L is available, right? J completed, K is available. From there, we can uh, continue to allocate with all of this. And then when it's done for L, we can move on the uh, K done. So L is ready. We can 3, 2, and then M is done for if K and L are done so it means we need to wait until both K and M are done so it's here to one that simple in so that is the series method uh, I hope it uh, helpful